Hello and welcome to the second video in my little series about unit and integration testing. So if you haven't watched the first video yet, make sure to check it out because in this video I explain some of the requirements I had for finding a good testing solution. And I also show you a first POC I did with VTest and Puppeteer. And those two I already used to create some tests for my MePride gallery, which is linked below. So if you're interested, check out the code. It contains everything, including the dev containers, the test setup, all you need. What I want to do now is I want to walk you through the different tests I've written and use those to explain how you can use Puppeteer and VTest to write your own integration tests. First of all, I want to have a quick look at my library and explain why I wrote the test the way I did now. So I directly use Puppeteer and I wrote basically integration tests from a library because writing unit tests for what I have here is not that simple. So let's, for example, look at one of my smallest components here, which is called horizontal scroller. It takes a list of elements here. Those are already DOM elements. And then it wraps those at CSS classes. And yeah, that's basically it. So it's building a container around a set of elements. So it directly works on the DOM. If I wanted to unit test this, I would either have to not only mock this, but mock those classes here. So instead of directly calling those DOM classes, which is basically part of my DOM tools. So I already have an abstraction layer here. So instead of directly calling those, I would in inject this DOM tools here in the constructor, then I could mock it and write unit tests. So making sure that certain functions are called with certain values. Why I don't do this is I want to enable tree shaking. Here in this class, I just need those four functions from the MeBright DOM tools. If I were to pass in an object, so the DOM tools basically is an object which contains like 30 functions, which you can use to manipulate the DOM, then tree shaking would be hard. So that's why I have a direct import and I directly use the DOM tools here. So while I don't want to do this here, so basically injecting the dependencies and then being able to test those for some other libraries, this might be the right thing to do. And this is also if you start with test driven development, you will directly end up doing a lot of dependency injection right from the beginning, because it's the only way to really test most of your components and functions. Because if you don't inject the dependencies, those classes or functions would create those themselves. And then those dependencies would make it hard to test the functions. Since I use Puppet here, I don't need to test at this level because I can do this or most of this directly at the Puppet here level. And I want to show you this in a second. Also, I don't want to go overboard with this because it's still a personal project. And for me, the integration tests in this case are sufficient and I can reach a very fine granularity. But we still can write some unit tests here. For example, down here, I have defined some types and for each type, I have a checker function. This function is called during the initialization of the library and it basically tests the types of what's going into the library because while my library is completely written in TypeScript and I have strict linting and I within the library, I don't have to worry about the types not being correct. While this is true, in the end, this library gets transpired JavaScript, which is then what's used in the browsers. At this boundary, the interface boundary between my library and whoever's calling that library, I can't really be sure what's going into the library. And that's why I've created some checker functions that make sure, for example, if a config is passed in, so if certain elements, which are all optional, are passed in as part of the config, then I make sure they are of the right type here. This ensures that from there on, the typing in my library will be correct. And for this here, I can write a unit test. So this is the first thing I did. Let's have a look. It's a very simple test and it's not yet using Puppet here. So here I just have a test suit where I test the check, some, the check thumb scroller config function. And I test the different use cases. For example, if I pass an invalid input, for example, here a string, or if I pass a negative number, same here for the initial index. Down here I also test if I pass into numbers, which are positive, it does not throw an error. So that's a very simple unit test for this checker function. And what I need to do now is also write tests for the other checker functions I have. Now let's have a look at the integration testing I did. Remember in the first video, I showed you how you can either inject individual elements into a page, which you've set up with Puppeteer, or you can navigate to a home page. What I did here for the tests is I have a single test suite here where I test the use case where I have a gallery with just one single image. And I've set this up here in a separate file because it's then easier to maintain. So here I set up some styling, which is important because knowing those styles, I can then do some 
tests. So I have different diffs here and here I set up a container with a slideshow and a thumb container. Each of those contains an individual image and I've made it a base 64 image. So I have this image just two by one pixels wide. This way I don't have any dependencies. I don't need to load any images. And down here I basically set in the same aspect ratio of this base 64 image the sizes I want for the image. So it's the same as if I had a real image of 1200 by 600 pixels. So this is the simple markup here. And now let's have a look at the actual test. So first here we have the well-known imports, which I already showed in the first video. And here I first load the page markup. So here from the gallery with single image, I also load the iffy gallery script, the one which I built, the minified version, which is located here. And that's a requirement for the tests. First need to build the library because being an integration test, we don't directly test here individual functions individual TypeScript functions, we're really using the minified library as it would also be used or injected in a real HTML page by a user of my library. Then here, there's the setup code. This is how I initialize the gallery. This is the same code I have, for example, if we go up here to the one image only gallery. If you look here, this is what you typically have down in the script tag. Then I also define some constants, which are the values I test against. And remember, this is what I have set up in the styles of the HTML here, so 40 REM, and the image width also coming from the HTML. Now here we have the typical puppeteer setup, which is now a little bit different than before. So here we set up the page. Then this is the first step. We set the content and we use the gallery page markup, which I've just read from the file before. Next, we want to inject a script. So the first script we inject is here the iffy gallery script and we create a script tag Then we set the content, the code, and then we append it to the head. Since it's an iffy script, it will be directly executed and populate the global variables, which I can then use in the next script, which I inject here, which is the gallery setup code. So remember here, the gallery setup code requires this meprat gallery TS being a global variable. And that's what happens when we call this iffy gallery script. So once this is done, everything's loaded, this here is executed, and now I have some certain expectations how the gallery looks. And this is now what I want to check with the puppeteer integration tests. So we go down here to the describe to my test suite and I give it some name because I will have different test suits later, also with multiple images. The first thing what I want to check, that's a very simple test. If there's only one image in the gallery, I don't need a thumb view. Let me quickly show you what this means. npm run dev. So a normal gallery with many images has a thumb view down here. But if I just have a single image, then I don't need a thumb view because there's nothing to switch between. And that's the first test. In this case here is set to display none. So what I do, I first get the thumb container. This is also the ID which I use here. So that's the ID of the thumb container. And then I have to evaluate again because I can't just directly use the thumb container and yeah, check if display is none. This doesn't work. So here with this evaluate, we always switch into the context of the browser. So the browser has its own context. It has access to a set of functions which we cannot directly access here in our node environment, which is what's running the tests. So that's why you always need this evaluate. And then inside the browser context, we can get the computed styles of the element. And the element is this one here, which we pass in. So that's the way you can operate here. You can first get the element you want to investigate, then you pass it into this evaluate function, and then you perform some logic on it to query certain properties. In this case, I want to have access to the display style. This is then returned, and here I can do an expect for the display to be none. So that's a very simple test. The next one is a little more complicated. So the image stage is a wrapper around the images. It has a set of properties. It's also responsible for fading in and fading out images when I switch through different images of the gallery. So what I first do, I get an array of image stages because although we just have a single image here, there can be more images. So the correct way to do here is first get the array of image stages and make sure that is just one. So this is the first thing we can check. Let me quickly show you again. If we go into the browser and inspect the code here, you see here 
there's an image stage div which is wrapping the image and this is what we're interested in now that we have the image stage make sure it's just one we can get some of its computed styles and we want to make sure that they have certain values so again we do the evaluate here pass in the first image stage and then we return an object this time with multiple style properties which we're interested in so we cannot just return the style object itself because remember here we're in the context of the browser which has access to all those properties and we should just return a simple object which already contains the evaluated styles so that's the correct way to do it i think so i'm not a pro yet with puppeteer but i did some experimenting and this seems to be a good way to do it. So once we've returned the computed stars, we can check them. So for example, we can make sure that the width has the width of the container in which the image stage resides. Also, the same is true for the height. And we want to make sure it's absolutely positioned because all image stages should be in the same position at zero pixels to zero pixels overlapping each other. Finally, we want to check that at this time, the opacity is not yet one. So when we reach this evaluate, what's happened is we have loaded the HTML, we have injected the scripts, the scripts have been executed, but what the gallery script does is it first creates an image stage with opacity zero. And then since there's only one image directly shows the zero image. And this starts a transition from zero opacity to opacity one. This transition in my case takes one second and this one second hasn't yet passed here. So at this stage, we make sure that we're currently inside of a transition going up from zero to one. Then we sleep a second to make sure that the animation is finished. Then we can again evaluate this time just the opacity. And here we want to make sure that it's now one, that the image is shown. And then I have a final test here. There's an image info object, which I can get access to. And here, instead of directly checking and evaluating the DOM, we evaluate another script here. So here's the global gallery object. We get the image viewer, which is a function of the gallery interface. And the image viewer has access to the image info. And we want the image info of the image index. The image index is zero in this case because we just have one image. Otherwise, it would be the index of the currently shown image. In the image info, we have a title with a height. So again, we return object with those. And then we make sure it's here, the test title, the image width and the image height. With this, you've now seen several ways how you can use Puppeteer to write integration tests for the library. And you see that you can get very granular about it. So it's already going into the direction of unit tests in parts. Finally, what's left to do is running the tests. So I'll do npm run test, which is the script that I find here on the package.json. So we test run. This will now go through all my tests and hopefully everything will be fine. You see 11 tests have passed, everything's working. What's now left to do for me is to add additional tests. So really making sure that everything works. And once you've set up everything, or if you already started with test-driven development, good practices into the project, usually you'll get bug reports or you'll find bugs yourself. So something is not working the way you want while you're testing the library or whatever in the browser. At this stage, always try to first write a unit test that also covers this use case, because then you first have a failing unit test, which you can then use to check if whatever fix you implement works. So that's a good approach, how to deal with bugs that are either found by yourself or by other and report it to you. I hope you found this interesting. So as usual, it's very practical. It's showing practical examples from the stuff I'm working on. But I also try to explain different ways you can use Puppeteer. Now it's up to you. Make your own tests with it. You can check out my code, have a look at it, or even use it as boilerplate for your code. Just remove the sources and the test and yeah, insert your own stuff and then you're ready to go. There's just one thing left to do. So now the tests are run manually. Typically, what you would do is have automated testing. So once you've implemented all your testing, typical way to do it would be to have a test stage before you can merge a PR. So whenever you push stuff to GitHub or whatever version control you use, you would trigger a test stage where your tests are run. And if those tests fail, you wouldn't be able to merge a PR, for example. So this is something you could set up. Let me know if you're interested in it, then I'm going to make another video about it. But for now, I think this was enough to get you started. So till the next video, see you. Bye.